I have been waiting for nine months to tell you the secret of why the groove in these rings is so wide and today is finally the day. So a lot of you have seen my videos of the Income XL rings and how you can use both the outer and inner grooves to create a three, four, or even five part pole with nothing more than two of these rings and three soft shackles. But there's a whole lot more to the story about the real reason these things were invented and it's gonna completely change the way you think about winching and recovery. Now I'm not gonna show you a demonstration of pulling something really heavy with something really little. We already did that when we used my Jeep to drag my 30,000 pound wrecker straight sideways. As a lot of people said on those videos, yeah, pulleys and blocks have been doing that for years. That's nothing special. And they're right. Multiplying the power of a winch with pulleys and blocks is nothing special. But having all the gear needed to multiply that power by five weighing only two and a half pounds, that is something special. It also comes with a problem. You see, if I am stuck here and my anchor point is up there 30 feet away, I need 30 feet of winch line to reach it. But if I want to go up there through a snatch block, back to my truck here to double my power, I now need 60 feet of winch line. Now let's say I'm really stuck and I want to three part this to give myself a lot of power. I now need three times as much line, which is 90 feet. And since 80 to 100 feet is about the average length of line on most of these consumer grade winches, we're going to use 100 feet just for easy numbers. You have to leave the bottom layer on there so your line doesn't slip on the drum. That gives you about 90 feet of line to work with. You're maxed out. But what if three parts isn't enough? What if you need four or five because you're trying to winch out a big truck like this with a pickup, or you're trying to winch out a really stuck pickup with a UTV, or you're trying to really, really slow down that line speed so you can move in precise movements on something that's teetering on the edge? Well, that's simple. You use extensions, right? Right. But extensions come with a problem because you have to connect this rope to that rope. And when that connection point gets to your pulley or your ring or whatever, you have to stop, disconnect, move it to the other side, reconnect, and start again. Or do you? So we've got three of our lines set up here, and as you can see, number four doesn't make it back to the truck. That's why we have our extension. Okay, so this is our winch line, this is our extension. Although they look very different, these are the exact same line. This is the 7 16 Yankum line. This is the 7 16 Yankum line. Just this one does not have the protective coating on it that this one has and that all of them come with when you purchase them. This was kind of a test piece that was left completely bare without that UV coating in there so that if there was any damage or burn or heat marks or anything like that, it would be very easy to see on this uncoated line. Now to connect these two lines, we have three main options. Number one, hard shackle. But as you can see, when this gets up to the ring, it wouldn't be able to pass through or around. Number two, and probably the most common with synthetic lines would be the soft shackle. We just got it through this loop, through that loop, they're soft shackled together. But just like the hard shackle, it will not go through that hole. Now I can tell you from accidental experience that it absolutely will go around the outside of this groove if you're winching and not paying attention and seeing that it got to where you should stop and you keep winching. It'll do it. It's not good. Uh, pay attention. Please don't ever do that. Be better than me, but it did. And number three, which is the important one today that completely changes everything you know about how you're going to rig up and set up for winching and recovery is the cow knot or square knot. Some people call it. It's kind of back and forth on that, but you take your extension, you loop it through your winch line, now you bring the other end of your extension, this part takes a while, and you run it back through that loop. Now you pull it back through, again, takes a while. And what you end up with, once this rolls over itself here, is a square knot. The other good thing about using this uncoated rope is that you can see the two different ones very clearly and how they're laid out. Now listen, this is the most important part of this whole thing. If you're going to pay attention to anything in this whole video, let it be this. This is very, very weak. Do not pull on it yet if we are not ready to start winching. If you just do that and start pulling, you are in very much danger territory of breaking this line. And I know that because I watched it happen on a test bed over and over again. When we rolled that line over, we introduced a twist into the one that we rolled, which is our extension. That twist, you could see these fibers twist completely around almost 180 degrees there. That takes the vast majority of the strength out of that line. So what you need to do is free it up. Make sure everything's nice, free. The twist is out of it and we set it again. Look, now we're parallel legs in, no twist, parallel legs in, no twist. Now we have a strong knot. Now this is ready to pull on, but there is still a reduction in working load limit. There are people out there who claim to be experts on this stuff and this maintains 100% of the working load limit and they are wrong. That's just 
the plain and simple of it. This is a 15% reduction of working load limit, so keep that in mind. So we've got our five part rigging all set up here uh, with our extension connected in. And like I said, please, please be careful of people who claim to be experts and claim to be teaching you when really all they're doing is reading one chapter ahead of the class. But you can see here, parallel legs, parallel legs, no twist in the fibers, no twist in the fibers. 15% reduction in working load limit, good to go. Now to show you the kind of mechanical advantage we've created with this system, I can grab this line right here, which is the line coming off the winch. So this is the one that will be putting the pulling force into the system. And with one hand I can pull, and I just pulled a 10,000 pound truck up the slope with one hand. And I know people are starting to type right now, that truck doesn't weigh 10,000 pounds. Yes, it does. I own it. I've weighed it many times. This isn't a pickup. This is a tow truck disguised as a pickup. So it's got a big wheel lift on the back. It's got all kinds of frame reinforce, reinforcement, everything down through the whole thing all the way up to the front end. It's got hydraulic pumps and reservoirs under that toolbox in there to run all that. It weighs 5,000 pounds on the back axle, 5,000 pounds on the front axle. I'm not the smartest person in the world, but last I checked, that's 10,000 pounds. So now it's time for the magic of the system. We're gonna start pulling this in here. And you can see right here, one line goes around the outside, one line goes to the center. This one ring is two snatch blocks in one. Also note how the ring is connected to the truck with a double loop soft shackle. This is an extra long soft shackle for getting around large things and for doubling up like this to increase its working load limit because the amount of force you can create with this much mechanical advantage can overload a single soft shackle. Also, be very, very mindful of your actual connection point on the vehicle because you can overload this very easily with this setup. This is not the weak point. This is not the weak point. This is not the weak point. I know that for a fact from the brake testing we did on the certified test bed. We tried to brake this and I can tell you right now uh, that was a massive fail and in just a little bit I'll show you why. Oh, you probably also noticed that the truck changed and uh, there's two reasons for that. One is because I realized as I was going to pull out the line on the other truck that last time I used that truck on a recovery, I had pulled all the line out all the way and re-spooled it really, really nice. And that made me remember that last time I used this truck on a recovery, I left the line in a big old balled up mess and said, one of these days I'll pull it all out and re-spool it. So, since I was pulling all the line out for this demonstration, why not use this truck? So in all reality, re-spooling the winch line is the main reason I did that, but then while I was switching, I realized a secondary benefit that's actually gonna be much more useful than that one there. And that is that switching trucks is gonna cause all the conspiracy theorists to go down there make a whole bunch of comments about how this is all fake and I had to switch trucks for some reason or another and this is all a big setup. And those comments are just going to add to the comment count of the video, which is going to cause the algorithm to push it out to even more people, which means this is going to get a whole lot more views, which means two birds with one stone, win-win. Now back to the important part. Look right here as our connection between the two ropes gets to the rings and what's about to happen. This is where you would normally have to stop, get everything locked in place, back off your rigging, disconnect whatever connection it is here. Hope you have enough room in the lines to get that connection to the other side of your pulley. Connect it back up and start again. But remember in that original video when I said, my friend Alan is a secret genius. You might not think it at first, but he is. Watch this. Look at that. No need to stop do all that stuff and switch your connection to the other side of the pulley, it can just go straight through it. This means you can now use all the extensions you want to run out as far as you want and you can just pull the whole thing all the way in until your original winch line reaches back into your winch. Absolutely changes how you think of and plan out a recovery and the options you have. Now as we get down here to the bottom ring, it's gonna go around the outside instead of through the center. Look at that. Now, let me back it up here. That right there, come forward. That is the reason this ring is as wide as it is. It's almost like someone put some thought into this and this is exactly how it's designed to be used. That is a thing of beauty. Look at that. Now let's also look at the rope coming out of here because you see it's flattened out right there. Is that rope damage? Look at that, we flattened the rope. Uh, we better take a look at that. Now I'm gonna do this in one cut. No cutting the camera. There's no one else around. Nothing funky going on. We're gonna put this truck in park here. Shut it off so we can hear. flattened out rope. There are people 
who have said I have damaged the rope with these rings because they saw it flattened out right there and now we see it for ourselves. So let's go ahead, back this off, get this piece of damaged allegedly rope here. Now what are we going to do about that? We are going to set you down. Again, I'm doing this all in one cut, one take, everything like that because uh, how am I going to use two hands and hold you at the same time? So if there's no trickery going on, okay, just stuff you in my shirt pocket. Flat rope is not damaged rope. Again, that uh, thought comes from people who are not actually educated in how synthetic lines work and what is and isn't damaged. Again, this is someone who's just trying to read ahead of the class, but if you take this rope and you just move it around like this, look, it opens right back up. Do any of those fibers themselves look damaged to you? No, and look at everything's still soft and movable and that section right there back to nice and round you could do that anywhere along this whole thing that is not rope damage if flattened rope was rope damage we wouldn't be able to use synthetic rope on winch lines in the first place because every single layer when the next layer goes over the top of it gets flattened if you don't believe me grab your uh, winch with synthetic rope on it Pull the rope out down to the bottom layers. Every one of them is completely flattened. So if that was rope damage, synthetic winch lines wouldn't exist. The more you know. Okay, back up and rolling. I know that was one really long take that was probably terrible for my audience retention, but I didn't want anyone to say there was any trickery. We already have enough of that by switching trucks. Okay, so here we go. Back up to the outside of the upper ring. Right around the outside beautifully. Out the other end. And now this is my actual winch line. We're going to run it all the way in here to my winch itself. And look at that. Spooled up beautifully all the way across the drum. We're able to pull it all the way in from down there using the extension and a five part line that we would have never been able to reach just the drum on its own. And we didn't have to stop and disconnect and reconnect our pulley points. Like I said, secret genius. Uh, there is a Yankum affiliate link in the description down below. If you didn't get what you wanted for Christmas or you want to add to what you got, click on that link. Treat yourself. You deserve it. Okay, truck shut off so you can hear me again. You can see we're on... We're on tension still. So we back off. I put the truck in park. Brake on. So we bring this back. Because this is a square knot, all you do is just run it back and forth. And it comes right apart. A square knot will never become a knife knot. A knife knot is a knot that you need a knife to get back apart. So we just pulled that truck with that system and this all opens right back up. And we just pull it all the way through. Again, the takes a while part. The longer your extension, the longer it'll take. And then we're done. Disconnected. Put your stuff away. So this line right here, this uncoated line, has been getting used to test and prove and try this method out since March of this year, which was nine months ago. Okay, so this is prototype test number one. We've got two winch line extensions. We've got a coated winch line. We have uncoated, well, two uncoated extensions. winch extensions. And we've got square knots that are the union between the winch line and the winch extensions. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna drag that square knot through the system show you how that performs. All right, let's hit it. Want to ride the brake while we pull it? I want to pull it under tension through that. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So that one would be more. Watch that one. Yep. Easy peasy. There's another one coming right there. they got some load on them and this one's gonna pass right through that inside circle with no issue now here comes the other one it's gonna go right around the outside diameter with no issue doesn't even phase it so we're using one ring as two snatch blocks all in this one deal which just greatly minimizes the amount of rigging you have to carry to set up more intricate pulls like this and you don't have to stop 
when your extension connections get to your rigging, which has never been possible until now that I know of. So this is definitely changes the game on what you can do with winching and how easily you can do it. So here comes where you would normally have to stop and re-rig your whole setup. But with this ring, it goes right through, no issue at all. It is now December, that means all that testing happened over the summer. Uh, well, spring, summer, now into the fall and winter. So we had plenty of hot temperatures, plenty of 100 degree days. There is no burns, there is no wear, there is no breakage in this whole rope. The only thing it has is way down here on this end. Someone might have noticed that right there. And since that would probably end up getting pulled up in a screenshot of someone else's video trying to call me out for something, uh, this is not damage to the rope. This is a poor splice job by me. Uh, Yankum puts out a video on how to tie these locking Brummel splices into your own winch line. So you can run the, uh, the Yankum fair lead right here and it stores your line on the side right there. You've got no metal in the system. Everything is safe, easy, and that's what allows you to use those rings right there and pass the rope to the center. Anyway, long story short, that right there is not damage to the rope from getting snagged on something, getting cut, getting burned, the rings wearing out something. That is the tail end of this splice where it goes buried back through that I did not bury quite deep enough. So I need to open all this up, bury that back in there farther and kind of redo that. That was, that was my bad when I made this lineup. So should it be fixed? Yes, absolutely. Is it rope damage? No, absolutely not. But hey, I never said I was good at this. So why, if Yanka made all this back in March and we tested it out at their shop there and everything went so good, why is it now in December before you're finally hearing about it? Well, that's because they wanted to do a whole bunch of testing. Uh, a good part of that testing they did on their own in-house. A good part of that testing was done on a certified testing facility where everything was pulled to destruction except for uh, that ring because couldn't destroy it. Uh, another part of that testing was me in the field over this last nine months, including throughout the summer hot months. So I've actually done quite a few recoveries over the past nine months where I have passed that extension knot through the ring or around the ring, uh, including some that you've seen. Uh, uh, pick up, I remember winching out in the snow with my Jeep. Uh, the snowmobile recovery where we by hand recovered a snowmobile, it happened in that one. Granted, that was a light pull. Uh, quite a few others. Um, just in the jobs that were filmed for YouTube, I tried to keep that like either very off to the side of the frame or completely out of the frame and never mentioned it so that it wasn't a shown thing because Yankum was still in there testing of it. And taking the time to do that extensive testing is how Yankum found things out like, hey, if there's a twist in that cow knot from when you roll the rope over itself, you just lost most of the strength in that knot. Here's what we need to do to make sure that doesn't happen. Very important stuff. And finally, after all this time, nine months of testing on my end, using it in the real world, Yankum going through the physics and properties of how synthetic rope and the fibers react and work, a certified test facility blowing all this stuff apart and breaking it every which way they could. Alan finally called me and said, hey, good to go. Have fun with it. And fun I will have. So now let's address some concerns of the non-spinning ring here. See on these rings, due to the oblong hole in the middle, the ring does not spin. The rope slides around the ring. And the big concern here that I keep hearing about is heat buildup. Those two words keep getting thrown around over and over again. Heat buildup. Because the ring is not spinning, the rope is sliding. That means it's clearly building up heat in the rope and burning it, right? Well, no. You see in this design, the rope right here going into the ring is ambient temperature, whatever it is outside. It goes to the ring, it rubs on it for, what's that, probably four inches there, and comes out the other side. So it has that three to four inches of rub there to build up heat, and then it leaves to just go cool back down to ambient temperature. Now with a traditional ring that spins with the rope, obviously there's no friction on the rope, therefore there can be no heat buildup in the rope, right? But the ring's still spinning, so where is that friction? Oh yeah, on one spot on the soft shackle where it just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning on one spot over and over again. Isn't that what would cause heat buildup? Is that the source of the heat never goes away, it just constantly sits there and gets more and more and more. 
not only touches in one spot for a little bit and then leaves. Because with the traditional ring, the ring spins with the rope. Therefore, there's no friction on the rope and there can be no heat buildup, right? Yeah, great, no, wrong. Wait, hold up, let's think about this. I mean, the ring still has to move, right? Let me check. Yep, it moves. Okay, so where is the friction happening? It's not on the rope, that means it's on the soft shackle. Because keep in mind, this winch line is the same rope as this soft shackle. So if the friction is supposedly bad for this, how is it not bad for this? Ah, uh, but Casey, that's where the protective sleeve comes in. That protects the soft shackle from the friction, all is good, no. Cause you see, whether you're using a traditional spinning ring or the Yankum XL ring here, what makes this whole system work so efficiently is the very low friction coefficient between this winch line and this ring. Now what is that friction coefficient or also known as friction loss? At peak load, that's estimated to be 10%. I know what you're thinking, 10%, that's a lot. Well, just remember, if you doubled this up once, you gained 100% and lost 10. I'm very happy with that because even this big, bearing, expensive, pulley, greased up thing there has friction loss. Yes, there is a bearing in there and it is greasable, but there is friction loss in that just as well. And uh, I would actually bet this is not as far away from that as you might think. But back on topic here. This extremely slippery rope having such a low friction coefficient with this anodized ring is what makes the system so efficient. So if you've got your spinning ring on the rope itself, when it comes to friction, great. Move it up to that protective sleeve right there. That protective sleeve is not made of the same slippery stuff as this rope. Meaning by using the spinning ring on that protective sleeve right there, you could actually be creating more friction loss than the non-spinning ring with the rope sliding over it. So now that I just blew your minds for a bit there, let's take it a step further. That whole thing I said about peak load, very important because peak load on that winch line is not the 10, 12,000 pounds of pull you're getting off that winch. Peak load is, I actually don't know what it is, but it's like 25-ish thousand pounds. Impossible to create that much line load with a winch that only pulls 10 to 12,000 pounds. So as peak load comes down, so does friction loss. It's a beautiful thing. So now that we have peak load on our line, let's talk about this inner radius of the ring here because that is another hot topic. And uh, anyone who's a five minute Google expert on synthetic ropes knows that for a transitory loop, meaning a loop like that where the rope is moving, uh, you need eight times the diameter of the rope. With a 7 16 inch rope, the diameter of this inner radius is not eight times the rope. So why would Yankum have designed this to not be eight times the diameter of the rope if it is made to slide through? Well, like I said, a five minute Google expert knows that you need eight times the diameter of the rope in a transitory loop. But a 10 minute Google expert knows that you need eight times the diameter of the rope at peak load. Back to peak load, what is peak load on this rope? 25-ish thousand pounds. Again, something you're never gonna be able to create. 25,000 pounds of single line load with a 12,000 pound winch. And just like with uh, friction coefficient, as peak load comes down, so does the requirements of the bend radius. It just keeps getting more and more beautiful. Okay, fine, you got me there. It's not eight times the diameter of the rope, but it's still well within the rope specs. Why wouldn't you just go around the outside since it is eight times the diameter? Like this one here. Well, you pull, that's all fine. You go slack, you pull, uh-oh, what happened? The rope fell out of the groove. Now when you pull, if you didn't catch that, you just saw your soft shackle in half. But when you go through the center, um, yeah, this is a totally, can never, ever, ever fall out of the groove because it's not in a groove, it's in a loop. Pretty cool, huh? Hi yeah. Now a concern that's been brought up about using the ring like this that's very valid because it's a concern I had as well and is question number one that I asked when I was shown this method back in March is now that we're pulling the ring apart in tension, are we at risk of blowing the ring apart and exploding it? Because the normal use, you're going around the outside, this part of the ring's actually in compression. Now we've changed that to the ring in tension. Well, this goes back to that brake testing I mentioned earlier of the rings, and I said it was a total fail. So I got to go to the testing facility, which is here in Oregon, and got to watch them try to break this ring. And the issue was, because that hole is only so big, the biggest test slings they had on their test rig that they could fit two of through that hole in order to pull it apart were not strong enough to break the ring. They kept breaking the test rigging over and over again, and the ring was fine. <laughs> Oh my god, so 
The swing! The swing broke. The ring held 80,000. Are you happy? I'm very happy with that. I now know a 3 8 winch line on a 12,000 pound winch going through that. I'm good. You're good. It made it all the way to 80,000 pounds and held. So, uh, yeah, as long as you stay under 80,000 pounds of pull, if you could even figure out how to create that much tension on this, I guess you're good. So now you know the real reason for the Yankum XL rings. Are they incredibly durable? Yes. Do they allow one ring to do the work of two? Yes. But most importantly, they allow the connection point of winch line extensions to pass through the pulley which completely changes the way you think about rigging and the options you have in recovery. Which means, like I said, way back in the first video of these things, secret genius.